Hey fun fans, our friends at GoBuilda have supplied us an awesome giveaway of a Shaft Beams bundle for all FTC videos in the month of October. To enter, be a YouTube subscriber and comment on your favorite GoBuilda.com component or part. You can enter in any video that has this intro. There's no wrong answers here. So make sure you comment below. Just starting off on GoBuilda, uh, first of all, thank you guys for coming on. Uh, I know the entire FTC community is excited to have you guys on here. So could you just give us some background on GoBuilda? When was it started? Why were you guys started? Where are you guys located? Stuff like that. Well, <clears throat> we're located in Winfield, Kansas. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, so about two years ago, we were um, you know, in our R&D department discussing the need for a metric build system. And for those of you that don't know, uh, we're the same uh, group of folks behind Actibotics and Servo City, um, and so we wanted to take everything that we've learned with Actibotics over the years and make a metric version of that, essentially. Um, so at the same time, we scaled it up and, and made it a little bit bigger in scale and um, worked really, really hard on it for a couple of years and launched it last September, and, and we're really happy with it. Awesome. And so... Um What's your relationship with Modern Robotics? I know a lot of people saw GoBuilder for the first time on the Modern Robotics website. What was that all about? Yeah, so Modern Robotics, we, we teamed up with them to uh, develop everything from basically motors. Um, you know, you can see we have utilized the Modern Robotics to make this 12-volt motor on our face mount planetary gear motors. And so that was uh, one of the things we worked on with Modern Robotics. So it's, it's, been a, it's been a really good relationship with them. So we've been really happy with that. Awesome. And you guys said that like Actibotics is, um, like you guys were started out of Actibotics and you guys are more metric and Actibotics is more uh, SAE. Could you give some more differences between Actibotics and GoBuilda? Yeah, so Actibotics was a little bit of the older standard. It was developed a lot with kind of hobby industries in mind. Um, and then teams started picking up and using it a ton in FTC. Um, along with kind of the need for a more metric building system, GoBuilda brings a little bit more of FTC centric stuff into the market and lets us focus on that oh, just a little bit more and is generally in a lot of ways kind of a V2. So it'll use a grid-based pattern instead of acrobotics, a circle-based pattern. So it lets you do some cool things like mounting beams in a lot more orientations than you could using a circle-based pattern. Um, it'll be all ball bearings like acrobotics and generally fix some of the smaller things we didn't love about Acto just quite as much. A lot, a lot more scalable in every direction. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, we awesome. got a lot of requests from our overseas customers uh, really wanting that. I mean, they love the acrobatics, but they really wanted a metric building system. So, um, it was a great opportunity for us to do, to do a whole brand new system. Yeah, and metric is used so commonly around the world, it helps make it more international as first grows internationally. So, before we get started about learning some of the new products that you guys have released, uh, let's go ahead and get started with our first giveaway, which is going to be for the Rex Grab, Gap, uh, grab Bag. Uh, Tyler, could you let our viewers how they can win it? Yeah, so uh, for winning the first one, uh, and, uh, guys, do you mind showing that on screen just a little bit so we can uh, see what that, uh, what that might entail? Uh, so it's going to be the Rex uh, grab bag there. Go build a winner is going to be your keyword. Uh, we'll type in chat a few times for you. Don't forget what you got to click that little follow button uh, up there on screen to be eligible. Type that in the chat. Uh, and then anybody who subscribes will get five times luck to win. So good luck, everybody. We'll draw for that in just a few minutes. Awesome. And since the World Championship in 2019, GoBuilder has released a ton of parts uh, for FTC teams. And one of the more recent parts that they released were 8mm rec shaft. Uh, what was your thought process be behind coming up with these products? What are the rec shaft and what do you see them being used for in FTC? So 8mm recs was kind of um, brought up as a combination of a lot of the great aspects of 6B and a lot of the really cool aspects behind 12 recs, which is kind of our bigger beefier standard, you can get that in steel and aluminum, and it's great for like stuff you jump on and ride around, but it's a little hard to use in FTC, especially because you need telewalks and stuff to run on channel. So one of the great things about 8 racks is it'll fit right in an 8 mil round bearing. You can get those in an 8 round ID and a 14 mil OV, so it can drop right in the channel, and you can use it in the same form factor you'd use 6 feet, but it gives you a lot of that really super tough positive drive, and in, a, in applications where 6D may not be quite strong enough, 8 racks is just that extra leg up. 
And so is it meant to replace 6mm D-shaft, or are they supposed to be using conjunction? Yeah, it won't ever replace 6mm D, just because, you know, 6mm D, and Go Builder is also, you know, not only for FTC, but also, uh, you know, a much broader broader market market space. So 6D is a staple in, in industrial applications. So you see a lot of Chinese motors being made, 30, 37 mil, 32 mil. Most motors like that are going to have a 6D output shaft. So 6D will never go away just from, from a market even outside of FTC. So no, it will definitely stay around for, for quite some time. Yeah, and I could totally see those being able to be used on like a drivetrain to transfer motion and use live axles. That way um, you could transfer that motion effectively. So moving on from the eight millimeter rec uh, shaft, let's talk about the dual pattern pillow block. Could you describe what that is for our viewers and show us a little bit about it? Sure. <clears throat> the uh, dual pattern pillow block uh, basically has the go build a pattern on both sides, but they rotate independently. Uh, so you have dual ball bearing and then a thrust bearing on the side. So they're gonna be great when you need to take a downward force and rotate something uh, like a turntable. Um, but they're also really useful when you just don't have room for like a shaft. So in this case, we have uh, it connected to a piece of go rail where you traditionally wouldn't have a hole going through to run a shaft through. To, so they're going to be good for a swivel kind of application as well as continuous rotation. Yeah, and it's great to see something like that. I know there was something similar in Actibotics and to see the parts in Actibotics getting moved to go build a uh, has really made it a much more competitive uh, system for everybody. And you've also released the two to one bevel gear set. Um, in the past, bevel gears really haven't been used by FTC teams that often just because they haven't been reliable. Can you talk to us a little bit about how your bevel gears are different and what sets them apart? Yeah, well, we just did an upgrade and I'll pass this on to Jason as well. We just did an upgrade to our bevel gears. You know, they're all, they're all hardened steel gears. And the cool thing about it that we did an upgrade for is we obviously we have our now go build a pattern in them, which allows you to just basically connect them to any of our hubs, our sonic hubs, our hyper hubs, as well as, you know, you can hook them into GoTube. Now you can drive GoTube. You can build some wicked cool gearboxes um, with them now. And so, of course, you can use them with, you know, 6D, 8 Rex, and even our 12 Rex, which you couldn't do before. So it really opens up a lot of uh, uh, a lot of options. Now, so. And they're, they're crazy stout. They'll be a 20 VP hardened steel gear. So they're so far overkill, I think, for FTP applications. That we're super comfortable pushing them. We've run them with, with really powerful brushless motors and with, without any wear, and I mean, just going through the muck and uh, no issues at all. So. That's awesome. It's cool to see that we can now get reliable motion at 90 degrees uh, in FTC. So one of the most fun uh, new products that's been released is the white rollers for the Go Canon wheels, as they're called on the FTC community. Could you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, so we thought it would be great fun for teams to be able to dye their rollers. Um, and so while we love rocking the yellow uh, rollers because, you know, our team is Team Go build -A, your team colors might be different. So you might want, you know, pink rollers or black rollers or, or whatever it may be. Um, so, yeah, we release these so you can customize it to your heart's content. So let me ask you guys, as you're going through here, you know, and I love the rainbow that you guys have on there. Uh, when you guys are, are looking at this, uh, I know we talked prior that you were looking to see what color combinations teams might come up with. Have you guys received anything from teams yet? Have they have they shown anything kind of cool with their creativity? Oh, way cool. Uh -huh. I mean, it's like Easter eggs. It's awesome. Some half and half. And I mean, you can see. Oh, yeah. I mean, so cool. I saw a bunch of really, really good looking blue ones. We saw some like. Somebody died four whole rainbow wheels, which is so <laughs> much dedication. <laughs> so I'm going to challenge chat here real quick. Chat, I want you to type in uh, right now on what colors you would make. I know I saw somebody, uh, Brian Sachs 135, that said, oh, the black is so nice. I want to know uh, if you were to get these, what color would you make your wheels? Because I'm curious to see how many how many colors we might uh, get. I, I'm all for the rainbow ones, personally. I think those are pretty awesome. So can you imagine those spinning at fast speeds, you know, and – you know, you know, just saying, um, you know, in FRC, we do a lot of vectored intake, you know, maybe get those giant intakes or something and get them spinning really fast. be really cool. They look really trippy when you get them up high speed. <laughs> <laughs> so Island from the Discord actually asked, will the Mechanum wheels be sold just with the white rollers and not with the yellow rollers? That way teams aren't, uh, let's say they're not going to use the yellow rollers. They don't have to throw rollers away. We've had that question a lot, and so those have been Friday uh, R&D debate questions to some of these, because we're kind of half and half on that. 
you know, obviously our, our warehouse doesn't want them, want us to, but you know, R and D will sometimes supersede uh, what the warehouse wants and packaging. So we'll see. It's it, it's not a done deal, but we in R and D we're pushing hard to be able to do that. So we'll we'll see. Keep our fingers crossed. I just want to read uh, some things from chat in regards to uh, what chat said on there. Some other cool ones. Uh, Super Bryce 07 says red and black, which I think would be pretty sweet. Uh, Antic Zoom says uh, check out Club Oreo's blue cookie monster wheels. I don't know what that means, but it sounds interesting. Uh, black Star for Robotics orange. Uh, Fulton blue and silver. Why I'm a fool orange and blue. Uh, Nathan from uh, one of our hosts says uh, alternating blue and white. Uh, so a lot of colors. I mean, of course, team colors are awesome, right? And doing. Uh, something like that. Red, black, and uh, white, orange, and black. Turquoise. Uh, yellow's the best, says Wesley, who I'm sure you guys at Go Build agree with, right? Absolutely. So lots of cool stuff. And in chat, yeah, keep typing in. Let us know uh, what colors you would want, you'd want to do. And, I mean, if you pick these up, obviously make them cool colors. And I'm sure Go Build would appreciate if you tag them on social media for something like that. Uh, but it would be super, super cool to just see all the different. I'd love to be able to go to the competition. Like, when I go to championships or something like that, how cool would it be just to see like a hundred different teams there, which is all different, like uh, colored, colored uh, mechanic wheels would be pretty awesome. Like that's the thing I'm most excited about because these wheels are so accessible to anybody. Right. They're really easy to mount on anything. So at qualifiers, I'm fully expecting to see at least five different types of colors <laughs> on wheels that I go around and look at the pits. Awesome. Uh, so those were some products that have been released in the past by GoBuilda since the World Championship. Um, but now we're going to take a look at some of the products that haven't been released yet and are going to be seen for the first time on the show. Um, and so do you guys want to go ahead and show off the first one? Yeah. Uh, like I said, one of our first ones is our 3 by 17 pattern plates. Um, this is our first uh, dive in for GoBuilda doing uh, pattern plates that are actually on obviously on pattern so but anyway this one is uh 432 by 96 mil and so it, we are starting to play around with a lot of these these are going to be in stock very soon so but um we've been starting to build a lot of really cool drive trains one of which is well not necessarily a drive train but at least kind of shows you what you're able to do with them mm -hmm. so we have some really cool components that we're not necessarily mentioning today that are going to be coming along for making some really neat drivetrains. So be on the lookout for those. But yeah, we're really excited about Pattern Place. Now, this is the first size, but uh, hopefully you'll see other sizes coming down the pipeline uh, very soon as well. So be, be on the lookout for these. But yeah, we, we love these things. So. so what applications do you see for these besides drivetrains? I mean, they would be great for sandwiching wheels. Uh, anything else that you see them being very useful for? Well, other drive mechanisms, and I'll let Ethan kind of get into that as well. But um, but everything from running gears and anything, obviously, is you can go in any any direction. So in running bearings in them, so any kind of drive systems, any pulley drive. If you've got a mechanism that needs to have multiple things running, uh, it works great for that. And of course, you can also bend them, and so uh, which opens up a whole new realm of possibility, especially with some bevel gears and bevel drives too. So. We're going to be able to show a lot of different op uh, uh, options of different ways to use them in our product insights. So be on the lookout for those too. So. That's awesome. And so how do these compare with your current offering of plates? I know you guys have some plates. Uh, how, do, how do these differ from those that you already have? Well, these have the 14 mil hole in them. And so um, all of our other plates are grid plates, which have the 4 mil hole on an 8 mil grid. And so, which are really, really useful to be able to use. But boy, opening up that, having a 14 mil hole in there to do one bearings and it basically drive systems all the way through, really opens it a lot. I don't know mm -hmm. if you guys can add stuff as, to Jason's been playing around with them too, so. As compared to the other like pattern plates, which just take care of that pattern down in one direction, this goes in two directions and okay. um, ends, up being, ends up being more of a body panel uh, per se for, for your robot, a larger structural element. And chat, just a reminder, if you do have any questions in regards to any of these things coming out, uh, some will get you right away, some will kind of push to a later, but make sure you tag at first updates now so that uh, appears uh, for us on screen and gets put into our queue. Uh, so obviously cool new products coming out, so uh, we know some of you have questions about what's going to happen for this, and uh, I know, Sundra, you seem antsy there. We'll be doing giveaways uh, very soon. Don't worry. <laughs> Awesome. And so I can totally see those plates being used all over FTC. And uh, 13 by 17 is, what? what's the dimensions on those? Like, is it holes or is it uh, millimeters, centimeters, inches? Well, 
Um, so there are three holes by 17 holes long, okay. or 437 by 96 mil. Okay, so that would fit inside of an FTC drivetrain approximately. Got it. Perfect. Uh, really, really cool. Again, chat, if you have any questions about this product, just let us know. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the next product, which is uh, the lead screw bore hyper hub. Um, could you tell us a little bit about that and what do you think it would be used that for? That name just brings excitement. <laughs> <laughs> so the lead screw bore hyper hub is uh, basically our you know, goal is to give you as much hold on a lead screw as you can possibly get. And so we've maximized the surface area that's touching the lead screw. Um, and we're using the super tough, tough uh, uh, ultra holding power uh, format of the Hyper Hub. And so this is precision engineered to go on there nice and snug and just give you maximum holding power. When you're building a linear actuator, it has a lot, I mean, once you get to around 150, 200 pounds, that, that clamping force with just a regular 8 mil board is taking a huge load depending on which you're pushing and pulling. And so being able to thread that on there and then clamp it on, I mean, it's, it's not going to slip the length of the shaft. Um, so now the you know, size the limit on the power that you can transfer you know, into your linear, uh, linear leaf. So. Yeah, it can withstand the, the axial load forces of, uh, that these uh, eight millimeter lead screws can pump out. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. And is this something that you guys are putting into the lead screw kit? I know that was a very popular product, especially for last year. Is this going to be a part of it, or is this going to be an additional add-on that uh, teams can purchase if they need the extra strength? If I remember right, I think it's going to be in, yep. in the kit. Yep, so that's been an update to the, yep. to the linear actuator kit to include that threaded hub. So just to give it as much strength as it can. That's really cool. And does the Hyper Hub have two pinch points, or is it just one pinch point? It has two pinch points, um, which is standard with uh, all of our Hyper Hubs. So that way it's perfectly balanced. One screw going in one direction, the other screw going in the other. So you can run that thing several thousand RPM, and it just runs butter smooth on the shaft. Mm -hmm. So perfectly balanced. Awesome. And so that would allow you to, you could do a very fast extension if you needed to, or you could get a very torquey extension. It seems to cover the entire gamut of what FTC teams could be using this for. Mm -hmm. And so um, we talked about Rex a little bit earlier. You released a hyper hub for the 8mm Rex as well, right? Those two products are very similar, I would think, right? You're right. So they'll be very similar. You know, the biggest difference between those two will just be the bore. So on one hand, you've got the 8 Rex bore. We're all about maximizing the amount of surface area you have to clamp on that shaft and just get as much holding power as possible. And even though this isn't quite, a, this won't take quite as much linear force, it still is really nice to clamp on as hard as, it's, as you possibly can. Yeah, having both the Hyper Hub and the Sonic Hub kind of tag team a little bit there, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of things the Sonic Hub can do that the Hyper Hub can't do, and so it, it's, it's a good combination to be able to have both of those to be able to Obviously, you can thread all the way through a sonic hub, but you still get the screws going the opposite direction and still have the high-speed, uh, perfectly balanced uh, setup. Mm -hmm. And so are there any plans to release a sonic hub for the uh, lead screw, or is there a reason why you decided not to do that? Yeah, you know, the lead screw, you know, that, that hyper hub, boy, we talk about a, a lot of clamping force. So we wanted mm -hmm. to throw our, our, the maximum clamping force at the at the uh, leaf screw, the 8mm eight, eight, eight or 2mm mm -hmm. leaf screw. And so, but yeah, I, I think you'll see a 8mm a leaf screw with Sonic Hub coming back. All right, that's really, really awesome. And I think that a lot of teams could definitely use this in this year's game. Uh, with, there's a lot of lifting involved and a lot of linear motion. So being able to have that extra strength and extra reliability will keep your robot running in the matches. So let me, so, let me follow up on that and ask you guys. I mean, when you, when you look at creating parts, right, when you're moving in the future, you don't necessarily 100% know what the game's going to be, right? So when does your product development cycle start for something like that? And are you just kind of randomly throwing darts and hoping like, oh, hopefully this will be used in next year's game sort of thing? A big part of our design process is just building stuff. Um, so that's a lot of, like Jason and I do a ton of building random projects and trying to run into problems that we can find. Um, so if I'm building a drivetrain and I say, man, I cannot find a good way to do this, let's develop a part for it. And then I'll go through and, for example, mock up a CAV and throw it up on a board. 
everybody takes turns trying to shoot holes in it. Um, you go back and you make it versions three and four and seven and nine and come back and eventually it sticks up there. Um, it'll go through and get pushed to the later parts of the development process. We have a lot of good arguments there in the <laughs> corner booth at Taco Bell on Fridays. It was, we kind of meet there for R and D meetings and take up the whole backside and uh, kind of talk talk part for that, you know, a couple of hours. So yeah, a lot of things get hashed out there. So what is kind of the average, uh, would you say, cycle time on when something gets concepted to when you're actually like ready to release something like that? Or is it very a lot? Some of them go just crazy fast. I mean, like, we've had products in production in less than two days, three days. Probably. You know, so it depends on what it is. Obviously, like a gym, well, yeah. it doesn't take very long. But uh, other other items, you know, take a little bit longer. But, uh, well, I would say the average is probably three weeks. Four weeks, maybe a little bit sure. longer. It depends on how heavily we need to test. So, mm -hmm. um, test items, but um, we like to test a lot. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, I would say average three, three to four weeks before we pull the trigger and start production. And then I'll follow up with that is, uh, you know, obviously products get iterated even after they get released, right? So how do you use the community's feedback in regards to uh, either making new products or kind of iterating and making what you have even better? A great example of that was probably going to be we made an update to the Sonic Hub, the 1309, um, moved it from M3 to M4 screws. We had a couple of customers who just loved breaking the heads off the M3 screws. We were like, man, I, we're shocked, but yeah. So we updated the shape a little bit got onto a pattern, 32 millimeter OD. Um, there are a lot of parts that are just tweaked a little bit to fit a little nicer with some newer developed parts um, and moved it over to M4 screws. So if there's a need from the community, a lot of times we'll be able to take that feedback and do what we call a running change. Um, I think the majority of the feedback we get from the community, I mean, we, we listen to for that, and uh, I would say that's the majority of what, what drives us. Any, any changes or even sometimes new products. So. For sure. Really, really cool, and it's great to hear that manufacturers like you guys are really helping out the community and trying to make this a community first, uh, making products that are for the community and that the community is going to appreciate. Um, one of the things that I was actually wondering was, how did your interns involve in this? Were they part of the product development? <laughs> I know that this was like a huge thing uh, that happened in GoBuilder, and I know we're sidetracking, but um, what did they do? <laughs> it was awesome having the interns here. Man, I mean, yeah, you talk about a fresh set of eyes and just new ideas and something, mm -hmm. looking at things from a totally different perspective. But yeah, we had them do all kinds of stuff. I mean, you'll see some video down down the road here. Of, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, well, they, they built a six wheel drive, lightable, Rover um, using how many motors on that thing to build a motor? 18 drive motors, right? 18, 18 drive motors, so the wheels will rotate independently or turn independently as well. So we have a racing seat on top, and so they they built that. They built, oh my gosh, Mechanum chair yeah. that we rode around the warehouse. It was really pretty fast. I mean, mm -hmm. it would run several miles an hour. I think it was geared to 11 feet per second. Yes. So, it was fun. So a lot of bigger projects that we didn't really have time to mess with the scale. Um, and it allowed us to play a little bit more with really large scale, scale go build -a. That takes a little more time to develop. Are you guys going to be doing a similar program this year? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, awesome. And so we'll make sure that um, others can hear about this because I know just talking with some of the members that did the internship, they had a lot of fun. All right. We really, uh, we really like taking people who are right out of high school. So if you're a senior in high school, look uh, a little toward the end of the year, um, start next year for an application, and look through those and follow up with you after you apply. Awesome. Really, really cool. So now we've got two more products left uh, that you guys still haven't released yet that you're going to release on the show. Could you talk to us a little about the 5mm HTD belts? So this is one of those things that I built a lot with 15 mil wide HTD3, which I'll have a 3 mil profile. And it's great. And I really like it for some applications. It's crazy precise and runs so smooth. Um, but there are a lot of applications where you want just a beefier profile and you want a little bit of a narrower belt. So if you're in a situation where you're on a drivetrain and you want to, say, run two belts side by side, that's tough with 15 millimeter wide belts. But with 9 mil wide belts, it's a breeze. So along with those, we have a ton of lengths of 9 mil belts. We'll also have 24 tooth 
and 16 tooth pulleys. Um, two of those will be rack bore, so they'll be eight rack bore and have two set screws. We'll have a 24 and a 16 tooth version of those. We'll also have a hub mount um, 24 tooth, which will have four counterboard board holes and four tap holes. Way cool because you can bolt them together and mm -hmm. have a flush, uh, have, have a flush on each side. Yeah. So the it, it, uh, the heads are kind of sunk. Um, the counterboard, I should say. So it's sweet because you just the screws are back below the surface and it gives you the biggest things. You just get a ton of torque available from that profile. Another thing is with that, the, the reason we went with the 24 tooth pulley is there actually isn't enough space between the pulley and the channel for the belt to skip. Like you can just take a belt and without any tension on it and you cannot skip it in channel. It's crazy strong. Um, so I think you can run up to three of those. You can run three belts side by side or opposing in the channel. Too, so. yeah. uh, one of the things that is kind of seen as a downside um, of that bigger profile is in order to get a perfect center to center distance, you need to run it um, where the center distance is divisible by five because five is your tooth spacing. So a lot of the times, two holes aren't divisible by five in the build just because they're 24 mil apart. And that's why we have this new, it's super slick plastic uh, tensioner that's designed directed for this specifically. It's great on plastic and metal chain too. And it'll just slip over a standoff and keep center with the belts because you have two flanges and let you put that standoff wherever you want to get the tension just perfect the way you want it. That's really great. And you've got the slotted holes in some of your channels. So being able to use the slot along with the standoffs will definitely allow you to have much more precise tensioning on the belt. So like if you were doing a flywheel, you could have a little bit less tension on there. Or if you were doing a high torque situation, you could make it a lot more tension. Are these uh, belts reinforced with anything like glass fiber or anything like that? They are, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they'll be able to hold up. I know our team used glass fiber reinforced belts last year, and they definitely held up really well. And so how do you see these belts being used uh, compared to the 3 millimeter pitch belts that you see uh, currently used on them? I mean, you said torque applications, and they're a lot smaller. But is there anything else that you see stands out about them? Um, so those are the two big ones. Uh, a big advantage of a smaller profile is it gets really smooth and really precise. So if you're building a 3D printer or something that you're running like a laser cutter, that's where 3 mil HTD or even maybe a smaller profile sometimes is great. You go around a circumference a lot. Yeah. You can go a lot tighter and, and have a much smaller tooth uh, mm -hmm. count. So. Drive trains are where I love. I'm a big drive train guy in general, but that's where I love 5 mil HTD. Um, arms are great and really just if you are prioritizing torque capability and never skipping over precision, I think those applications with 5 mm HDD is a little bit better. Really cool. And it's been the standard in FRC for them to be using this 5 millimeter HDD. Um, yeah. Do you have and any plans? FRC plan teams run like 9 wide HDD 5 all yeah. the time. So yeah. we're probably way overkill on all of our belts, but I think that's good. Do you have any plans to market this towards the FRC community? And make oh yeah, there are some FRC teams who rock Gobilda um, and do great with it a lot of times. Um, that's not something that we push super hard for yet, but we're always kind of looking at those parts on the back burner. Really, really cool. And um, having belts just gives you so much more versatility uh, compared to, like with chain, chain's great because it's thin. Um, where do you see belts being used instead of chain? Oh boy, drive trains obviously, we talk mm -hmm. about drive trains, but any any time any application you really you do not want any kind of back to well mm -hmm. much less backlash than the chain drive belts belts are the way to go and just when you hear belt run versus chain uh, it's just it's music to our ears when you hear just how smooth they run so mm -hmm. yeah, we we love belts and you're gonna see a lot of other components new components coming down the pipeline uh, utilizing HTD5 all kinds of cool stuff so. awesome and I know. As teams have progressed, the great thing about GoBuilder is it has so many different ways. So you have uh, so many different ways to drive different shafts. So like you can use gears, you can use belts, you can use chain. And so it gives a lot of versatility to um, the builders. And um, 
one of the things I was wondering about was, I know this is a little bit of a divergence, but how do you see belts comparing with plastic chain? Because, uh, like, the plastic yeah. chain has, like, the lightness of the belts. It's fairly precise. Um, what differences do you see in there? The biggest one, I love plastic chain because you can adjust it super easy on the fly. If you're in a situation where you're just prototyping, I'll take a plastic chain as a done. Um, but belts are great if you're looking for a really permanent solution, I think. So belts take more time to the thought process of your drive train, if you're doing the drive train or whatever you're building. Just as far as routing or chain, where you can throw a sprocket on there and just all of a sudden put the chain on and, and you're ready to go. So, uh, But we see a lot of chain, especially plastic chain being used in intakes, things like that. Mm -hmm. You're reaching out, especially last year when you're reaching out and grabbing things and needing something really lightweight. So you know, we spend a lot of time designing our chain to make sure that it's Really Not as strong as belt, but it, it's pretty stout. Mm -hmm. It's also <clears throat> worth noting the pitch of eight mil plastic chain. You know, being eight mil works out really great in a lot of assemblies. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And so now we're going to move on to your last product, the one that's definitely been getting the most amount of hype. They've been called the Gosumis. <laughs> uh, can you tell us a little bit about your lift kit? Yeah. So lift kit's been thrown around uh, R and D for the last while um, and we really want to get a really super awesome lift kit out there to teams. Um, it's been pushed back a little bit but we have a lot of individual components that have been versions in this lift kit assembly that we wanted to rush to teams who are really aching to make their own solutions. Um, we will have a lift kit that's pretty strong, or not pretty strong, it'll have rigging guides and we'll have a little bit more motor mounting options out of the box but some of the things that we're looking at releasing to kind of your general consumer. This is one of my favorite ones. Um, you'll have all of these will use 10 millimeter OD, 4 millimeter ID bearings. And this will have four bearings, two on each, or four bearings on each side. So you get this crazy strong movement. If it's back collapsed, there's no way to be flexing. Your bearings are so far apart. And as it extends, you get a ton of throw and it's still super rigid. So this is one we're really excited about. We want to make sure that whatever slides we come out with, um, that they are very rigid and the ball, mm -hmm. ball bearing support. I mean, that's what Go Bill is all about. It's all about ball bearings and just really industrial type feel to them. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, this is going to be our first grouping of parts. For those out there that kind of want to build their own or design their own kind of, kind of lift mechanism and or slider or linear motion mechanism. So we've got other units that are going to be coming out as well, and you can show some of those too. Yeah. yeah, so the next one up, we have more of a carriage-based solution. So it'll, these will all operate on very similar principles, but with very different implementations. So this is great. Um, my mind always goes to, like, relic recovery. If you have a glyph lift, um, and you just want to move along a piece of channel, it's so quick to integrate, and it works really, really smoothly. You retain a lot of that strength. Um, that's one of my favorite, just quick and dirty, I need to move something along a piece of channel. Um, and we've had a lot of options for that in GoRail, but in channel, it's kind of a new beast for us. And then we have another one that takes a lot of the inspiration from that different, um, more single stage version, and it combines it into a multiple stage assembly. So this will run three stages super easy and really compactly. And it lets you stack multiple of those um, just with some standoffs if you want to create a really long lift as well. So there'll be a couple different versions of these coming as well, mm -hmm. depending on how much weight and, and uh, how much movement you actually need. So there's going to be a good variety of, of options, uh, which I think everybody will really like. Mm -hmm. So, so sure. these are really, really, really cool. And yeah, um, you can see food. just how smooth they are. Uh, completely ball bearing supported. I mean, they're, they're really, really smooth. So. Yeah. Uh, how do they compare to the V rails that you guys have been? I mean, I got my hands on the V rails this summer, and they've been super smooth. Uh, so, are, are these like better than those? Uh, what do you guys compare them? I think they're all very different. Um, the V rails can be a little bit heavier than you know, something like this, and we'll use a, little more, a few more parts. The biggest advantage is you can stack about as many as you want and keep them fairly compact. And they have a lot of adjustability. Um, 
but it's always nice to be kind of improving and looking at different use cases for all of our slide systems. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.